PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Steve from APC, and I'm the course director here at APC. And in this video, we're going to talk about the SIMA P3 exam, which is the risk management. The first part of this video is where we're going to introduce to you the uh, new SIMA syllabus regarding the P3 exam. So we have got five aspects here with regards to the SIMA P3 exam. So as you, uh, as you know, the name of this paper is called risk management. So we're going to see how we're going to manage the risks uh, associated with the business decisions. So um, to perfectly honest with you, the risk management, some of the tools that you've seen that in the early papers you've studied, um, including, uh, so for example, the SIMA uh, E1, uh, the SIMA uh, P1, etc. I mean, some of the tools that you've seen that, but some of the tools that you may not see that. So uh, let's talk about the section A then, is where we're going to identify, classify and evaluate the risks. But what does that mean? Well, the, um, we're going to start from the risk. So is the risk a good thing or bad thing? Of course, to some extent, the risk is bad thing, because think about it this way. I may run the risk of suffering a loss in a business activity. So risk is a bad thing. But uh, some extent, risk is a good thing because think about yourself. And if you are running a business, if, uh, for example, you're taking the SIMA exams, for example, why do you take SIMA exams? It's because uh, you want to get promoted, uh, you want to get this qualification so that you, it, it can help you to increase your salary at some point in the future. So you're taking risk of taking this exam because the risk would be uh, you may fail the exam. But you're taking risk because after taking this risk, uh, you will get the benefit from it. So as a result of it, so risk is a good thing. But why do I say about it? Well, in the section A, we may need uh, we are mainly telling you about risk is not just a bad thing, but maybe it's a good thing. So that not in every circumstances we should avoid that risk. But in some of the circumstances, we should be able to accept that risk as well. So that's the issue that we're going to talk about in the uh, section A, also in the section B. It's talking about the responses to strategic risk. Of course, some of the strategic risk Think about it this way, we've got the multinational companies here and we like to expand our business. So how are we going to expand our business? One of the ways that we can do is to invest the money into Vietnam, for example. And if that is the case, maybe uh, the governments in that particular country were trying to nationalise my assets after I made our investment, for example, just, just the imagination. So whether or not we should be able to do that, that needs to be questioned. Okay, so that's the response to strategic risk we're going to uh, deal with. And also in the section C, it's talking about the internal controls related to risk. So what do I mean by internal controls are the business activities. Making sure the good thing will happen and bad thing will not happen. So that's what I mean by internal control systems. So one of the uh, examples of the internal control systems to manage the risk is that we have got the risk committee or the audit committee sitting up top and we've got the risk manager dealing with the risk issues. Uh, also we've, got, we've also got different department heads as well. So each of the department's head, for example the finance department's head, will try to report the cash flow risks to the risk manager asking the risk manager to come up with some ideas to uh, ally, uh, to, to, to help with the uh, department head to hedge against that risk. So of course, the risk manager may report his findings to the risk committee, it's up to the risk committee to uh, make the decisions of how to manage that risk properly. So well, that's one example of the uh, internal controls. Of course, we're going to give lots of examples in the section C to see how we're going to manage different type of risks later on. And section D also accounted for 20% of the marks is related to the technical bits of our study. It's where we're going to manage the risks, doing some sort of calculations. Most importantly, we are focusing on the foreign exchange rate risk. 
as well as the interest rate risk management. We're going to focus on, for example, the foreign exchange rate risk, which means it's the changes in the exchange rate if it goes up rates overseas, and that will impact on our cash flows. One of the examples we're going to manage that risk is where we're going to use the money market hedge. Alternatively, we can use the futures contract to do that. Of course, those will be included into the section D. For the interest rate risk management, for example, is where we're going to see if this, there's an interest rate change so that we have to spend more money in borrowing the money uh, from the banks, for example, and that will impact onto the cash flow. And how are we going to manage that risk? Maybe we're going to use the interest rate futures contract. Maybe we're going to use the default rate agreement. Of course, those will be included in section D. It's a little bit technical uh, calculations that we're going to deal with. The last of our section is where we're going to look at the risks associated with the capital investment. So what do I mean by capital investments is what you've seen your uh, paper F1 as well as your paper F2. It's the capital expenditures that we've made. It's talking about the non-current asset. For example, we're going to spend money in buying the factory, we're going to spend money in buying the machinery, that will be the capital investment. So whether or not we can get benefit as a result of these investments into the capital investments. We need some question about that. We're going to use quite a lot of these techniques. And one of the techniques that we're going to use is the adjusted present value. Of course, you know the concept of the PV, which is the present value, because you know the concept of the NPV, which is the net present value. But net present value says we're going to use the weighted average cost of capital as the discount factor. But adjusted present value says using WAC as the discount factor is not appropriate. We need to separate them out. So that's the issue that we're going to look at mainly in section E uh, of the syllabus. Okay, so that's the part one of this video. So part two of this video is where we're going to talk about the exam format of the P3 exam. You're given 90 minutes, 60 questions, and passing mark will be 70 marks. All of these questions are objective test questions, are assessed by the computer directly. You're given multiple choice questions, jot down questions, you've got uh, some of the yes or no type of questions, You've got uh, some of the numbers entries, questions, etc. So you can get instant results after you submit your answer to the computer. So that's how the P3 exam is assessed. And finally, how APC can help. Of course, we will provide you with all of these HD quality videos, such as this, going through the whole syllabus in depth, together with our expert videos. We're going to tell you how you can pass this exam relatively easily, including quite a lot of these exam techniques uh, associated with that. Also we've got the principal study notes, where we will go through the whole syllabus, complying with the latest syllabus together with our videos, with lots of exercises as well as the practices in there, so that if you follow our steps, you can pass the paper, uh, paper uh, P3 exam relatively easily. If you've got any inquiries and got any questions as well as the problems during your study, email our tutor so that we can provide you with the satisfactory surveys um, answer to you. Uh, replying your uh, email as well as the questions um, very, very soon because we provide the tutor support as well. Lastly, we've got the pass guarantee. This, this means that if you fail this exam, you can enrol in the course again free of charge until you pass it and we are confident that you can pass this exam with our help. So happy studying and looking forward to seeing you in the class. APC, accounting for your future.